good afternoon dear students today we are going to see the next topic of unit 4 dear students i have already discussed in the introductory class that fourier series is a tool which is used to analyze the periodic signals so for each and every periodic signals can be analyzed by using a fourier series so here it is not that each and every periodic signal is analyzed by Fourier series. If the following periodic signal satisfies these three conditions, then only it is known as a, then only it can be expressed in the form of Fourier series. So, dear students, today let us study the three Dirichlet conditions. So, first we will see the condition number 1. So, this Dirichlet condition is, it is condi condition for existence of Fourier series. So, condition number 1, that is Dirichlet's first condition is, signal should have finite number of maxima and minima over the range of time period. So, dear student, the first condition says that, signal should have finite maxima and minima. Finite means you, you already know dear students what is finite. Finite means which should be less than infinity. And infinite is that is if it the value reaches to infinity. So each and every signal should have a finite maxima and minima. Dear students in this in this signal here x1 of t here I have mentioned the peak as a maximum and then the when the peak uh, declines to 0 then it is called as a minimum so here you can see the triangular waveform as you all know that the triangular waveform when it is from 0 to 1 that is from 0 to 1 when it reaches the point 1 then it is called as a maximum so here dear students you can observe that first let us see that the time period for example for time period 0 to T naught. Let us see the time period for 0 to T naught. You can see that there is one maximum and similarly there are two minimums. One maximum and two minimum. Hence we can say that here the maxima and minima for a time period 0 to T naught is finite. So, here the condition 1 is signal should have finite number of maxima and minima. Dear student, in the first signal that is x1 of t, here we can see that for a, for a particular time period, the maxima and minima existing are finite over the range of period. So, here we have to mention this is very important over the range of time period. That is for the over the range of time period. For certain time period, it sh should have a finite minima and maxima. Similarly, dear students, here in the signal x2 of 2, x2 of t, in the signal x2 of t, you can see that, that is from the time period 0 to t0 and t0 to 2t0. So, from 0 to t0, you can see that the t0 till the t0 by 2 there is one cycle that is from t0 by 2 to t0 you can see many number of cycles existing that is there are infinite maxima and minima. So here in this this signal we can find the infinite maxima and minima. So dear student the condition one says that signal should have finite number of maxima and minima over the range of time period. Next is condition number 2. Signal should have finite number of discontinuities over the range of time period. Again students here this is very important over the range of time period means whatever we are calculating for a signal we are not considering the signal from 0 to infinity we are considering the signal from for only certain time period. Dear students here again in the first signal that is x1 of t you can see that you can see that here finite number of what discontinuities. So here from 0 to 
जीरो टू टी नॉट इज वन साइकिल ठीक है लेट एस कंसिडर फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी नॉट इज वन साइकिल यू कैन सी द फाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ डिस्कटिनिटी दैट इज हियर फ्रॉम जीरो टू फ्रॉम जीरो एट द पॉइंट जीरो इट इज अटेनिंग वन एंड अगेन एट टी नॉट बाई टू अगेन इट इज जीरो एंड देन एट टी नॉट अगेन इट इज वन सो दीज आर द डिसकंटिन्यूटीज सो द हियर वी कैन कैलकुलेट द डिसकंटिन्यूटी एंड एज वी ऑल नो हियर देर आर फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी नॉट द डिसकंटिन्यूटीज आर फाइनाइट दैट इज वी आर गेटिंग टू हाई एंड वन लो सिग्नल सो हियर द डिसकंटिन्यूटीज आर फाइनाइट सिमिलरली इन इन द सिग्नल एक्स टू ऑफ टी यू कैन सी दैट For example, t naught is the time period. So in that at t naught of time period, the discontinuity is infinite. That is, for example, in the in the above you here you can see that the width and length. As you move downwards, the width and length is not finite. For example, if here it is one by one, here as it goes to the origin, the width and height of the signal is reducing that is it is not countable and hence here we can say that the disk the signal is having an infinite number of discontinuities over a time period t not so for such signals fourier series does not exist so dear students the fourier series exist for only the periodic signal but it should satisfy that periodic signal should satisfy the dirichlet condition if the periodic signal satisfied the dirichlet condition then only fourier series expansion can be can be fourier series expansion can be done so these are the two condition next let us see condition number 3 here in condition number 3 signal should condition number 3 states that signal should be absolutely integral over the range of time period so here dear students absolutely integral this the word absolutely integral we have already discussed in the energy signal so here don't compare this with the energy signal as you already know that the aperiodic signals are energy signals so here we are discussing about periodic and here periodic signal means either it will be a power signal or the the signal which is neither energy nor power so here absolutely integral means here for example in the signal x1 of t here you can see a square wave form so here here the signal should be absolutely integrable that means absolutely integrable for certain time period let us say t not at 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 that time period if the signal is integrated then you should get a finite value for that time period if you did not get the finite value for that time period then the fourier series does not exist that condition we can see in this x2 of t here you can see that here if we take the integration of the time period that is t not here the area reaches to infinity hence the fourier series does not exist for this condition so dear students these are the three condition that is those are called as dirichlet condition so the next is dear students let us see the formula of discrete time fourier series the discrete time fourier series of a discrete time periodic signal x of n with periodicity capital n is defined as x of n is equal to summation k equal to 0 and minus 1 c to the base k into e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n or you can write it as summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 c k e to the power of j j omega to the base k into n where c k is fourier coefficients and omega not is the fundamental frequency of x of n and omega to the base k is 2 pi k upon capital n which is equal to kth harmonic component of 
exophen dear students i have already discussed what are harmonics in the last class so here i hope you remember that so next is dear student this is the fourier coefficient ck the fourier coefficient ck for k is equal to 0 1 2 up to capital n minus 1 can be evaluated by using this formula that is ck is equal to 1 upon n summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi k n upon n for k is equal to 0 1 2 till n minus 1 so dear students now let us see some of the properties of fourier series so here we will see the first property that is linearity property in this linearity property dear students we have already you can uh, study these properties in terms of continuous time also here i have taken it as a discrete time that is if x1 of n after fourier series is t to the base of n so here dear students let x1 of t and x2 of t in terms of that you can take let x1 of n and x2 of n are two periodic signals with period with period capital n then and with fourier series coefficient cn and dn respectively so we are taking here fourier series coefficient cn and dn first is the linearity property as you all know dear student x1 of n after fourier series we will take at cn and x2 of n after fourier series we will take dn so a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n after applying fourier series here the linearity property is a into cn plus b into dn next is time shifting property that is in time shifting that is x of n minus n not is equal to after fourier series c to the base n into the e to the power of j omega n into n not next is time scaling in time scaling x of n is into x of n after fourier series is cn similarly x of alpha n into after fourier series you will get alpha c to the base n and time reversal if x of n after time reversal it will be c of n and then x of minus n after fourier series it will be c of minus n thank you